it doing everyone, CP Morty here, back in the video, and yes, you may notice that this is an iMac. Now, we fixed this one a while back, this is our 2011-inch uh, model, so not the new 5K one, we're not pulling that one apart, but um, this one has once again become unreliable, and it's just a system that's sitting there doing nothing of use, and it's just something that I don't really know what to do with. So we're going to do something pretty cool with it. What we're going to do is pull this glass panel off, remove the LCD here, and then go ahead and actually go and, well, put a PC in there that we can actually play some games on. So what we'll do is we'll have a video card facing hopefully downwards or something like that, so we can use the uh, RAM slot cover to go ahead and connect up our peripherals to the actual system. The idea of this system is to be a cool custom piece that is like really cool to look at and allows sort of the user to have a fairly cool looking computer. Now, we won't be able to use this internal LCD anymore because we won't using we won't be using internal components, but my main problem with this system is the actual thickness of the system. So as we can see it's about you know, about that thick from the actual thickest point of the actual computer. Edges are a lot thinner. My main problem is actually cooling down the components. Now, we'll be recycling a couple bits and pieces out of this system, but most of it will just be your standard run-of-the-mill sort of PC part stuff. So, we won't be doing uh, that much custom work as of yet. So, uh, figuring out how to cool down a unit in literally no space. We thought about water cooling and running like a radiator down out of the bottom connectors and then having that. So, something like the H100i or just a custom solution, but not too sure there. Uh, so, this will be another multi-part series that will actually get done into a fairly cool looking computer and the worst part is I'm going on holidays like tomorrow so yeah no not much time to spend on this so I guess first job is to pull this system out pull the whole thing apart and see what we have to work with and see how much space in there is when we were fixing it I didn't note how much space I just noted that we had stuff in there so we're going to reuse a lot of things so these ports I will hope to get the uh, ports here working again so we don't have random empty ports and this power button will be used hopefully and also to uh, the standard power cable will hopefully be able to be used. But with that being said, let's start pulling it apart and seeing what we have to work with. Just a bit of dust, you know, just a little bit. And this is why thermal paste should not be used on like the VRM and RAM of a video card. So this is some, uh, what, I don't even know what AMD card this is. This is the MXM module that came straight out of the motherboard like so. So this is essentially the uh, mobile graphics card of this particular iMac. And the thermal paste that they put on has gone hard and it's crunchy and it's all looks gross. So 
there we go. Don't ever use thermal compound on your RAM or the VRM of your system. Use thermal pads, they're a lot better. Alrighty, so at this point the internals are free and we're left with a mostly empty iMac. So this center bit here I originally thought was just some part of the thing and started unscrewing and it turns out that this bit actually is the uh, little back stand connector. So we do have to unfortunately leave that there. I was hoping to have the motherboard in this sort of center section, but I'm going to have to rethink it. Probably going to install the motherboard either on this side or this side here. Uh, the only problem with that is it becomes really shallow at this point. So this is kind of like your thickest point of the computer uh, right here. So kind of a little bit bummed out that we can't exactly have the uh, power supply in there, but uh, not the power supply, actually the motherboard in there. But the next problem is the actual power supply. Now I was hoping to a point that the standard Apple one that came in this iMac, which is over here, which is really tiny, had at least a 24 pin connector. But alas, it doesn't even have that. So this is like some real crazy stuff. I actually have a new... Um, a new respect for Apple's iMac stuff in the way they've actually crammed this in. So that is a full power supply. So your standard power supply little box unit uh, has been compressed into this thing. Now with that being said, the iMac doesn't draw that much power, but uh, they've managed to cram it in there and it's a passively cool thing. So when the fans were all installed, there was no real fans going over this section of the actual power supply. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed by how much they've done on that. But um, yeah, so we just need to figure out what kind of power supply we're going to be using. We might either use an external one and just sort of run it through here, through the other connectors, or we use something like a really crazy little 1U type of one, so one that would be found in a really thin grade server. Um, but other than that, we're going to have to clean this up and actually paint the inside, because you can see here there's, there's this sort of coloured silver, there's this one, and then there's this. So this one up here is glue over the top of our uh, aluminium right here. Then we've got this one, which looks to be unanodized or something like that because there it's not a sticker over the top but it's also to not be anodized so as we can see here this is anodized that's anodized but then this one here that's not so I'm guessing that we're gonna paint over that but at this stage I have no idea what color the color theme that I do have in mind is gonna be uh, obviously silver and then green um, but I'm not sure whether to do a matte black over this silver or redo this silver. I don't know how well that's going to look, but um, I'm obviously not going to paint it um, before this video goes up because I'll be on holidays. Yay for that. So, guys, do let me know down below what kind of color scheme you think I should go with. Maybe you think silver and green is going to go bad. Maybe you think of a different color. Uh, do let me know down below. But, um, yeah, I'm just wondering what colors we're going to do the inside. I'm, I'm leaning towards at the moment just flat blacking this because it will cover up any minor scratches that we do have. Like this, we're going to need to sand out that scratch and those types of things. But, um... At the moment, I'm leaning towards flat black, otherwise uh, a silver color with some gloss in it and some bit of fleck to make it look pretty cool. Um, other than that, uh, we're going to have to start to pull apart this stuff over here and figure out how that's going to fit back into there. One more thing to note, I tried to whack this little uh, standoff out. You can see it's a little bit bent. This thing is the most well-secured little tack welded thing or whatever weld they've got going on here ever on a computer like I whacked this thing really hard multiple times and it did not budge except for it bent a little bit. So kudos to Apple for making a uh, fairly solid thing and also to the power button. Um, yeah, we're going to have to, I don't even know how we're going to paint around that because this unit is, as you can see, there's like a little dot here, that's how it's connected and I don't own a welder so I can't really weld it back in and apparently welding aluminium is extremely hard and I've never welded before so we're going to need to figure something out but alas, on to pulling apart the other parts. Alrighty, so we ran into a spot of a problem. So we've got our motherboard that we might be using, I'm not exactly sure. It is blue instead of the actual colour scheme, but um, I tried to mount up this cooler that came on the sort of iMac and all those kind of things, and well, the mounting holes don't even line up, so as you can see it falls short, let alone not actually fitting on this motherboard, even if we uh, do spin it round. Uh, it still will not go ahead and fit properly. It fits over the CPU just fine, but the actual mounting holes don't line up, so we're going to have to figure out another way of cooling this down with a low profile cooler to actually fit in the iMac because we know for a fact that uh, this type of cooling solution will fit in there but not much else will so uh, the stock heatsink and fan I believe just clears the glass I'm not exactly sure once it's installed over the top like that but um yeah not not exactly sure even just alone I highly doubt that it's going to clear the glass so we might have to buy ourselves a low profile cooler to actually get the job done
Just as a quick side note, if you've ever bought a Mac and that sort of new Mac chemically cleany smell, I don't know how to describe it, you only know it when you buy a new Mac, that kind of smell is still here after three years of, uh, nearly four years actually, of owning this system. So this whole, all these parts in this box section are all like four years old and you can still smell that cleaning chemically stuff on them. So. I really like the smell, it reminds me of the day that I got this system and I was super stoked when I got this system so kind of brings back those memories of uh, that type of computer but it smells very nice and uh, yeah, just a quick side note. Alrighty, so we have gotten to this point in the day. So we know for a fact a MATX motherboard will fit in here. I'm probably not going to put in that location. I'm thinking more over here so we can have the RAM modules in this lower part here so we can have some a little bit higher profile RAM in there because at the moment no stick of RAM will actually fit in there at the moment. These little pins here just clear it. So not really the best state to be uh, having a system. But anyway, so this MATX board will float around somewhere. Probably not going to use this particular one. But cooling was our next problem because the actual distance between the CPU and the cover glass is not even the same amount as a 1U server, which is a 1U uh, cooling solution, which is what we were going to use. So what we're going to do is do a custom cooling, uh, custom water cooling solution. So uh, over here will be sort of our radiator or vice versa, depending on which side I put the motherboard on. But somewhere around on one of the sides will be the radiator with a small flat style reservoir. And then that will go into, I don't even know what kind of pump will fit in here, so it might have to go out this little hole and then back in. Not sure at the moment, but we'll try and fit a pump within the actual unit. It'll be pretty cool if we can, uh, which will then pipe across straight into a right angle connector into our water block. Um, it's just all of a matter of getting everything to fit up and all those kind of things. I'm not exactly sure whether this will be a working PC, which means... Uh, I'm not exactly sure whether it'll ever run as a normal computer or whether it'll just be like one of those show ones that look pretty cool. But either way, um, we're going to have to do our own water cooling because not even where... I can't even find where the hardware is gone. Uh, not even a H100i will actually fit in here. I can't even see where it is. I have lost my H100i. Um, anyway, my point being, H100i won't even actually fit uh, in here. The actual barbs that connect the tubing to the radiator itself are too long. They just stick out of the glass. I've tried shoving them down in this little section here where there's a ton of room uh, just in that little section there. I'll try again uh, and also too we'll need to remove this and some of these standoffs but um yeah, I guess there's not exactly that much room. So I guess that wraps up this episode of CPU Modder for this time on our iMac conversion to awesome looking PC part one of I'm guessing four probably so part one will be this one next time we will be painting and getting everything ready the next time after that will probably be water cooling and putting it together and then the final video so I guess stay tuned for that it won't be for a little while because again like tomorrow I'm on holidays like leaving this house not at home at all so can't even do anything but alas uh, we will do our best to get uh, all this done and unlike the steam box this will be a completed project which will be pretty cool so other than that guys like what is like the video accordingly let me know what color you think the internal internals should all be i'm leaning on sort of a, a fluorescent kind of green and silver theme but let me know what you think goes well with silver totally up to you guys if you have a better suggestion than what i have then i will definitely be going with it give us a sub if you want to stay tuned for more of this and i'll see you all next time for another video